Then Neil and I, we got a, a similar assignment from Julie, which had to do with the Batman series. For Batman had been uh, one of the victims of the, the great witch hunt in that Frederick Wortham's book, anti-comic book, book <coughs> accused Batman and Robin of representing that sin which dares not speak its name. And Huck Finn and Jim, no, not at all, because that's respectable, except it wasn't when Mark Twain wrote it. Today, I'd like to pay tribute to one of the most prolific comic book creators of our time, Dennis J. O'Neill, also known as Denny O'Neill. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I do reviews and columns for two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Carl Vincent and Vampire Hunter, which is now being published by Cutthroat Comics, look for it on the web, and Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi, available on Amazon. Check the links below for the trade paperback, Dracula Rising. Also, other Carl Vincent merchandise available on Teespring. T-shirts and posters with original artwork from Mark Pennington and Rodolfo Easy. Also available is a book, which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop, Culture, and Politics. You can look inside all of my books available on Amazon. Check my author page for even more available books. If you like the show, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Here's some great artwork from the Carl Vincent Origin Story, available soon from Raphael Leno House and Cutthroat Comics. It's called Foul Blood. Look for it on Cutthroat Comics. And now... On with today's show. Comic book legend Denny O'Neill passed away recently, and I'd like to take a look at his career on today's show. Denny O'Neill was born into a Catholic household in St. Louis, Missouri. On Sunday afternoons, he would accompany his father or his grandfather to the store for some light groceries and an occasional comic book. O'Neill graduated from St. Louis University around the turn of the 1960s with a degree centered on English literature, creative writing, and philosophy. From there, he joined the U.S. Navy just in time to participate in the blockade of Cuba during the Cuba Missile Crisis. After leaving the Navy, O'Neill moved on to a job with a newspaper in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. O'Neill wrote bi-weekly columns for the Youth Page, and during the slow summer months, he filled the space with a series of the revival of the comics industry. This attracted the attention of Roy Thomas, who would eventually himself become one of the great names in the history of the medium. From Comic Mix, Dennis Joseph Denny O'Neill, the writer and editor who redefined the Batman, the Joker, Green Arrow, the Shadow, and the Question for the Modern Era, created or co-created Ra's al Ghul, Optimus Prime, Azrael, Leslie Tompkins, Madam Web, Richard Dragon, and Lady Shiva, and was a beloved contributor to Comic Mix. He has passed away at the age of 81. He started his career in comics almost by accident when Roy Thomas suggested that O'Neill take the Marvel Writer's Test, which involved adding dialogue to a wordless four-page excerpt of a Fantastic Four comic. O'Neill's entry resulted in Lee offering O'Neill a job. O'Neill had never considered working for comics and later said he'd done the test kind of as a joke. When the ABC TV show with, um, what's his name, he's on Family Guy now, Adam West, came into being and was a big, huge, and I think unexpected success, and it, it ran with camp. Camp is a one-line joke. Ha ha, I loved this stuff when I was six. Now that I'm 27, and I've got a divorce and a mild cocaine habit and a twice a week appointment with a shrink, look how silly I think it is, ha ha. That's the joke, it's not a great joke. Uh, uh, Susan Sontag has written some very intelligent stuff about Cam. But uh, the, th the show was a big success, and it was one of the times when the success of something in another medium raised the comic book success. I had a couple of hours on a Tuesday afternoon, so instead of doing crossword puzzles, I did the writer's test. He started with Millie the Model and Patsy Walker, but soon found himself writing with Doctor Strange and Daredevil. He also started freelancing for Charlton Comics under the name Sergius O'Shanganasi. And when editor Dick Giordano went over to DC Comics, he brought Denny along, where he wrote The Creeper, Wonder Woman, Justice League of America, Green Lantern and Green Arrow, Batman, Superman, and the revivals of The Shadow, The Avenger, and Captain Marvel, now retitled to Shazam. In the 80s, he returned to Marvel for a spell, where he wrote Iron Man and 
put Jim Rhodes in the suit of armor, contributed to the creation of the Transformers, and edited Frank Miller on his two runs of Daredevil, as well as writing the issues in between them, among many other things. He returned to DC in 1986 to become the group editor of the Batman titles, as well as writing The Question. He didn't limit his writing to comics, also writing at various times for Coronet, Show, Gentlemen's, Quarterly, Oh No, The Village Voice, Newsfront, Amazing Stories, High Times, Viva, Penthouse, Publishers Weekly, Ellery Queen, Mystery Magazine, Fantastic. Fantastic Generation 1, Fantasy and Science Fiction, Mike Shane's Mystery Magazine, Alfred Hitchcock, Haunt of Horror, as well as television, both live action, Superboy and Logan's Run, and animated, Batman the Animated Series, and various novels, including the exemplary Helltown. I talked to Stan Lee the morning after the first Batman show went on the air, and I asked, you know, well, what did you think of it? And he liked the little... 30-second cartoon that opened it, and not the rest. But I think in a half-hearted way, the comic books tried to follow the lead of uh, the TV show. The first time Julie offered me a Batman job, I thought, well, I can't do Kemp. That's not where my I, that's not my humor. That's not my sensibility. So no thanks. The second time it was well, the TV show was a huge success for one year, pretty much a success for a second. Limped into a third and then was gone. Somebody turned out the light, and Julie said, "Well, we're obviously going to continue to publish Batman and Detective. Uh, what do you got?" And, you know, uh, so for years and years from lecture platforms and in classrooms, I said that this is what Neil Adams and I did. We went back to 19, May of 1939 to what Bill Finger and Bob Kane did, and we simply did that character, adding what people learned in the ensuing 25 years about telling comic book stories. And I believe that until I got the job as Batman editor and actually went back and read that stuff. So uh, I think there's a, something in, in Aristotle's poetics about an idea that is implicit in a, in a drama. Our Batman was implicit. He was widely honored by fans and pros alike, including Shazam Awards for Best Continuing Feature for Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Best Individual Story for No Evil Shall Escape My Sight in Green Lantern number 76 with Neil Adams. For Best Writer, Dramatic Division in 1970 for Green Lantern, Batman, Superman, and other titles. And Best Individual Story for Snowbirds Don't Fly in Green Lantern number 85 with Neil Adams. In 1971, he also won the Comic Buyers Award for Favorite Editor in 1986, 88, 89, and 96. A Goth Award in 1971 for favorite pro writer, and was a nominee for the same award in 1973, received an Ink Putt Award in 1981, and won a Hoxter Award in 1998. He gave of his time to help teach the next generation of comics creators, teaching at the School of Visual Arts in New York City, writing the DC Comics Guide to Creating Comics, and writing for Comic Mix. He also sat on the board of directors of the charity, The Hero Initiative, an organization devoted to helping comic creators in need and served on its disbursement committee. Taking our cue from him, our recommended reading list for today is Denny's Columns. We'll miss him. O'Neill was married to Marifran O'Neill until her death. He was the father of writer, director, producer Lawrence O'Neill, best known for the 1997 film Breast Men, starring David Schwimmer. It's based on a true story about the plastic surgeons who invented the breast implants. And he died on June 11, 2020, at the age of 81. In 1985, DC Comics named O'Neill as one of the honorees in the company's 50th anniversary publication, 50, who made DC great. Possibly Denny's most interesting creation was Ra's al Ghul, the head of the demon, or in a rougher translation, the chief demon. He's a fictional supervillain and terrorist, appearing in American comic books published by DC Comics, commonly as an adversary of the crime-fighting vigilante Batman, created by editor Julia Schwartz, writer Denny O'Neill, and artist Neil Adams. The character first appeared in Batman No. 232's 
Daughter of the Demon, June 1971. The character is one of the Batman's most enduring enemies and belongs to the collective of adversaries that make up Batman's rogues gallery. Though given his high status as a supervillain, he also has come into conflict with Superman and other heroes in the DC Universe. Most notably as the leader of the League of Assassins, Ra's al Ghul's name in an Arabic translates to Head of the Demon. He is the son of the Sensei, father of Talia al Ghul, Nyasa, Ratko, and Dusan al Ghul, and the maternal grandfather of Damian Wayne, the current Robin. It's very interesting that uh, Batman and Talia al Ghul, Bruce Wayne and Talia al Ghul, uh, conceived Damian Wayne, which makes his father and his grandfather mortal enemies and it's no, and it's no wonder why the kid is like messed up in the head after dick grayson stopped being robin i didn't think i would like any other character as robin uh jason todd was pretty much dick grayson light and then tim drake was kind of dick grayson but with an attitude and it really didn't interest me at all dick grayson to me was robin but when they created damian wayne this character has got some issues and i'll tell you what i really enjoy stories with Damian Wayne's Robin. One of my favorites is the Batman Shadow crossover with DC and uh, Dynamite Comics, which I reviewed. You can find the reviews for those Comic Crusaders and Comics for Sinners sites. So look for them on there. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. Ra's al Ghul has been featured in various media adaptations. The character was portrayed by David Warner in Batman, the animated series, Liam Neeson in the Dark Knight trilogy, Jason Isaacs in Batman Under the Red Hood, D. Bradley Baker in the Batman Arkham video game series, Matt Nabel in the Arrowverse television series, and Alexander Siddig in Gotham. IGN's list of the top 100 comic book villains of all time ranked Raz al Ghul as number 7. In the Batman Adventures, the first DC comic spin-off, Batman the Animated Series, a caricature of Neil Neal appears as the Professor, one of a screwball trio of incompetent supervillains that also includes the Mastermind, a caricature of Mike Carlin, and Mr. Nice, a caricature of Archie Goodwin. The Professor is depicted as a tall, pipe-smoking genius who often gets lost in his own thoughts. And that was just a brief look at the career of Denny O'Neill one of my favorite comic book writers. Check out his work. It was, for the time, a fairly radical departure. Neil, we did Secret of the Waiting Graves, a 15-page story without Robin, with a supernatural angle. And Neil did a terrific art job. And it was the new Batman. Um, just, just that easy. <laughs> And as with Stanley and Spider-Man, you know, at the time it was, yeah, it was a job and it was more interesting than most of the jobs I was doing. I always, I was also drafted to write Superman for a year. Those stories have just been reprinted in hard covers, which surprises me because I didn't think I did a very good job. They evidently have their, their fans. But I always found it hard to write Superman and Batman was pure storytelling, no other agenda, and it w I, I would do a Batman story in three days, and it took longer than that to do Superman. Or, uh, and we, we went along until, as Neil Adams once put it, uh, then he had an alcoholic breakdown, and I kind of crashed, but managed to stay sober enough every every day to do what I had to. Well, my ex-wife said uh, you were distinguishable from a Bowery bum only by address, and uh, that's not too far off. And before I go, I want to remind you that I do reviews and columns for two sites: Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises: Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter and Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi, available on Amazon. Check the links below for the trade paperback. Dracula Rising, also other Carl Vincent merchandise available on Teespring, t-shirts and posters with original artwork from Mark Pennington and Rodolfo Ezequiel. Also available is a book which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop, Culture and Politics. You can look inside all of my books available on Amazon. Check my author page for even more available books. I want to let you know that Cutthroat 
Comics is going to be publishing the Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter origin story called Foul Blood. Look for it on their website, Cutthroat Comics, Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter, Foul Blood. If you like the show, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Here's some great artwork from my main artist, Rodolfo Ezequiel. Check the links below for the trade paperback, Dracula Rising. Until next time, this is Kevin Gibbons saying, live long and prosper, may the force be with you, Keep reading comics and keep watching those pop culture icons.